Hey there! Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. These may be equipped with locking screws or optional wedge locks. Optional sequence caps are available for use with the wedge locks. Wedge locks are standard on U2 BOPs. BOPs equipped with wedge locks require inspection of the wedge lock housing, wedge piston, locking piston, tail rod extension on the UBOP, tail rod on the U2 BOP, and sequence cap. If a BOP is equipped with locking screws, inspect them for damage from bending, impact, and corrosion. Straighten or replace any bent screws. If threads have been damaged by impact, use a file to remove upset metal, then run the entire length of each screw through the locking screw housing to ensure proper operation. Ensure that the tail rod bore and the plated portion of the wedge piston bore in the wedge lock housing are free from galling, cracks, and corrosion. Return damaged housings to a Cameron facility for possible repair. The OD of the wedge piston should be inspected for galling and corrosion. Remove any raised edges and polish the piston OD to a 63 RMS finish, except for scratches and other blemishes that are below the surrounding surface. The wedge piston's locking surface is the surface which bears against the end of the operating piston tail rod or tail rod extension to lock the rams. The wedge piston locking surface must be free from galling. Remove any raised edges and polish the locking surface to a 63 RMS finish, except for scratches and other blemishes that are below the surrounding surface. Do not remove metal in order to clean up blemishes that are below the surrounding surface. Inspect the O-ring groove on the end of the wedge piston for damage, such as scoring, corrosion, or a rolled over edge. Correct any damage found. Check for cracks in the thin sections of the tail rod through bore in the wedge piston using a die penetrant method. If any cracks are visible, replace the piston. The wedge piston's locking cylinder bore must be free from scoring, galling, and corrosion. If the bore is damaged, replace the piston. Inspect the head of the locking piston for scoring, galling, and corrosion. Remove raised edges and polish the locking piston OD to a 63 RMS finish, with the exception of scratches and other blemishes that are below the surrounding surface. Do not remove metal in order to clean up blemishes below the surrounding surface. Also inspect the locking cylinder bore of the wedge piston for damage if the head of the locking piston is damaged. Remove the O-rings, then make sure that the wedge piston slides freely within the wedge lock housing and that the locking piston slides freely into the wedge piston. In the UBOP, the tail rod extension of the operating piston extends through the wedge piston when the rams are fully open. If wedge locks are actuated before the rams are fully closed, the tail rod extension may be scarred by the wedge piston. Remove any raised edges and polish the tail rod extension to a 63 RMS finish, except for scratches and other blemishes that are below the surrounding surface. Do not remove metal in order to clean up blemishes that are below the surrounding surface of the tail rod extension. If the BOP is equipped with sequence caps, inspect the sequence caps internal components for signs of corrosion, wear, or mechanical damage. Replace damaged, worn, or corroded components.